Action Group Nightly. My name is David Stout. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Action Group. The Action Group is a financial analysis and investment ideas firm located at www.theactiongroup.com. We've got all of today's best winning options and equity trades. All right, in today's Action Group Nightly for June 16th, we're going to be talking about our Thursday market wrap up, our positions in constant contact, and uh, some of the calls we've got in the USO, some of the other current positions and exits we've got. We'll also give you an update on Giorgio's Corner, and I'm joined here today by our other trader, Giorgio Ferrero. Yes, we'll be talking about our uh, two two gains that we got today. Okay, we'll also be talking about our forecast for tomorrow. Uh, and as always, please check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Uh, today, uh, the market had a mixed day. Um, for the most part, it was up. Um, we did have most of the Dow components and the S&P components up, but the tech actually did end down, the NASDAQ did end in the red. Um, and it's actually interesting, there was pretty much a, a pretty wide spread between the Dow and the NASDAQ today. Um, we did get a lot of good data out today, which was good to see compared to the kind of doom and gloom we've been seeing over the past. And if you remember from the last action group nightly, I actually was talking about how we've had so much doom and gloom that we're setting up for, are setting ourselves up for a lot of beats in the future because you're going to have your analysts, your economic analysts, bringing down their expectations, which means that they're going to be easy to beat and they and the expectations are going to be lowered. And so when we do beat them or we do meet them, the the market reaction is going to be good, and that's what happens after a big pullback that happens on economic data. I've seen this happen before, and it's going to continue to happen, and that's why we've called pretty much a bottom here at 11,900. Um, the initial jobless claims came in better than expected at 414,000 versus the expectations of 421,000. They came down significantly from the prior week at 430,000. Um, and also housing starts were much better than expected at 560,000 versus the expectations at 540,000. Both very good things to see since initial jobs claims have been pretty weak over the last couple weeks and housing has been very, very weak. Um, anytime we see those two things um, improving, that's very good. Um, we also, however, on the flip side, we did have another weak manufacturing index come out today. Now, the Philadelphia Fed, um, not as, as important as the New York uh, Empire Fed, manufacturing index and pretty much expectations where this was going to be as bad as probably the New York one was. This is the first time since September of 2010 that, that, Fed, that the Fed index showed contraction um, and it showed a pretty significant amount of contraction moving down 7%. Um, so we do want to hopefully see some lift in that in the coming months um, and that will help get the market going but this was pretty much I think already priced in yesterday on the pretty much 200 point down day we had yesterday um, and that so the uh, expectation was they were going to be weak anyways. Um, market has now improved for three out of the last four days, which is nice to see. We did get a nice gain early on. We dropped later in the day as the dollar started to strengthen a little bit. But once we came back to about even on the market, even a little bit down, um, we got a quick rally back out of that, um, which was great to see the market rally off after hitting 11900 again. Again, I still continue to see a lot of strength coming into the market at that price level. And I think we continue to bounce off that level. Um, for the time being until something drastically changes in the market. Um, so today we bought uh, a couple things. Um, got a little bullish here. We bought constant contact. We were able to make a 1.5% gain on half of the position already today. Um, we bought at the breakout. Um, we had a buy stop at 22.96. I'm sorry, 23.96, excuse me. Um, that stock went up to about 24.30 where we got out a little bit of the position. Um, <clears throat> the candlestick's a little bit to the bearish side. Um, considering it did drop off the highs of the day, um, but the stock did close right above the um, breakout level, which was about 23.88, was where the 200-day uh, moving average, excuse me, the 20-day moving average was, and the price channel was at 22.9, um, and the stock closed right above that. So hopefully that's a good sign that it closed above the breakout point, so it can continue higher tomorrow. Um, and if we can get another big update, I think the stock could really take a nice big upturn and upswing tomorrow. Um, we also um, did buy some USO calls. Technicals don't look too great on this right now um, for a rally, but I think after a big pullback to 95, um, we wrote last week at the beginning of last week about how we thought oil was the oil looked like it was prime to go to 95. We had the issues coming out of OPEC with the supply issues there. Um, we also had talks, you know, the dollar was at a pretty much a low, and we also had some supply issues um, coming in from the EIA. Well, what do we what happened? OPEC now says that they've got enough supply to to fill our demand. Um, or there, excuse me, OPEC says that they don't have enough supply to fill the demand void that we have in the market, that basically they can't raise their supply. Um, the dollar now has looked like it's about to top out at 96, and we also have got um, 
the EIA showing a drop in supplies again for the second straight week of more than 3 million barrels. So there's some, some supply issue there. It seems like it might not be able to meet the summer demand. We got a huge pullback to 95. We got technical support. Um, the oil uh, that has a 200 day moving average now just below 93. Um, and I think right now, I think we've got oil is maybe going to have a little bit of pressure on it for the rest of this week. But I think moving into next week, I will be bullish on oil moving into next week. Um, other than that, um, our Hanson's natural food position weakened a little bit more today. We really need that to hold 70 to stay positive on that. If it breaks 70, we're probably going to have to get out of that one. We were stopped out of Under Armour for 1.6% loss today. That was unfortunate to see happen on such a nice up day. Um, and then we also recommended picking up some TBT $34 calls intraday, as well as we like Cincinnati Bell from our $5 list for another uh, update tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to George now, who's going to talk about a couple of his current positions and what he's been doing. Today we, uh, we, we bought to close both of our vertical put spreads on Apple and Cisco. This was the second time we played both positions as I continue to like them as they move as they move lower. I'm not calling bottoms on these stocks, but when I sell these puts or sell the verti uh, vertical spread puts, I think that they make temporary bottoms. Now, Apple uh, risk adjusted, we made a 3.16% return and Cisco 6.45%. That was really nice to see on both. Uh, Cisco today remained near 15. In fact, went above it up to 1503, which was nice to see. We may sell puts on that. With Apple, I did not like seeing the stock break right through the 200-day simple moving average down to 318 intraday. Uh, a little confused on where it's going to go next, so I'd like to just watch it for an another few days and see where we'll go on from there. We got into a new position today, uh, iShare Brazil ETF. We sold the uh, 6870, six, sorry, 6867 vertical put spread which looks really good because the ETF has a lot of support near 70. I figured we, I'd put us in a nice, less risky trade by selling the 68 puts. And the ticker on that that's, um, ETF is EWZ, correct? Correct. Yes, yeah, so that's the iShares Brazil um, ETF. It's EWZ. Um, does look like it's got a lot of support below it at 68. Um, actually, 70 looks like a very, very significant support line. So if this if that market can hold up at seventy, this trade's going to work out very profitably for us. Um, in the EVP, we didn't have a real, we haven't had a lot going on there. Um, the extended value portfolio lately, we did a, again release at the beginning of this week the residential construction equity analytics. Um, our top two sale candidates from that purport of Pulte Homes and uh, KB Homes, uh, both look like they are headed even lower as they are in some very very low, uh, or excuse me, some very risky markets in California and in the southeast. Um, and other than that, we haven't added anything new to it. We're looking, obviously, for a bottom before we want to really a, a, a consistent bottom. I mean, this is an extended value. This is a long-term account. So we're looking not for short-term bottoms, but a long-term bottom and reason to get excited about this market. And we probably won't until around the end of June when quarter two ends and probably should help bring a little bit of more cash into the market. And then we can get geared up for the quarterly two earnings reports. Um, for tomorrow, so the market's risen three out of four days this week. Uh, it's looking for its first positive week in seven. Tomorrow is crucial. I think if we can get a positive week under our belt, that would be very good for the market, and I think that could help us just to get some confidence going in this market. It's going to be tough, though. We had pretty weak earnings come out in after hours from Research in Motion. Um, they did beat expectations of 1.32 by a penny with 1.33, and revenue was decent. Sold a lot more playbooks than expected. That was the positives, but they dropped earnings per shares um, their guidance for the rest of the year significantly. It was at 7.5, um, they dropped it down to 5.25 to 5.75, I saw. Um, so that's a very, very significant drop in earnings per share. It looks like they're not looking forward to the rest of this year at all. Um, and things are looking a little bit weak there. I mean, this is not a new story. Everyone's known that research emotion is on the way out, probably. Um, the, the next poem, it, it looks like. Um, but it was, you know, if they could have gotten a nice report out, it definitely would have given tech a nice breather, at least, and a reason to get a little bit excited um, about some of these other companies. Um, then we also have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index tomorrow. That's the big data for point tomorrow. Um, I cannot see many reasons why I would expect that to be good. I mean, what do you think, Georgia? I don't see that coming out as positive. But, you know, that's probably what everyone's thinking. It's not going to be positive. And so 
if it can meet or beat, it definitely would probably give a huge boost to the market. Yes, I mean, uh, given that we have, some, although I believe that the bottom support on the Dow will be 11,500, here at 11,900, we've seen many days two months ago where the Dow would loom around this level if the Michigan sentiment report is good. This the market could rally up to 12,200. Yeah, that would definitely probably be the upward, I would say, resistance in the market for if it does get a nice day tomorrow. Um, I think you did see, you know, when we saw that buying at the end of the day, I was, you know, I was thinking about an hour left in the market when we were down, you know, okay, this, we got the, we got that rally yesterday, but this market just cannot get anything going. And to see that buying come in really, and, you know, and given the backdrop for what's going on right now, we've got Greece going on. We've had week upon week of bad data. We've got earnings pretty far away still. We've had some, you know, decent earnings come out in the last couple of weeks, but nothing to get too excited about. A couple M and A's here and there, but overall, the the backdrop's pretty weak. And to see the market go up on three or four days, it seems like valuations are getting pretty cheap. The market's technically oversold. I think it's time that I think this market may be sort of forming a little bit of a bottom here. Um, Eleven thousand five hundred is Georgia's bottom call. Mine's eleven thousand nine hundred, um, and we'll see who's right, I guess. So that's going to do it for today. Um, visit us at www.theactiongroup.com to see all of our trading ideas um, and learn more about our website. Um, email us at contact at theactiongroup.com with any questions, or you can call us at one eight hundred seven zero nine one one six zero. Become a part of our seventy percent plus accuracy.